千里之行，始于足下。A journey of a thousand miles begins beneath the feet. We now gather in the Tao to travel the journey together. Welcome to Tao Talks with Derek Lin, where we take a deep dive into the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. I would like to invite you to center your thoughts and direct your attention to this moment in time, to the here and now, to be fully present and mindfully aware. As we all ready ourselves for this sacred process of the Tao. Chapter sixty-five has its own Chinese title as well. It is the Great Congruence.、Um, let me explain what that means first by pointing to the characters. The first character, the one, the leftmost. Character means big, large, grand, great, and then the character in the middle is to be congruent with something, as in going with the flow of something. And then the third character is chapter. The great congruence means to be congruent or aligned with the great Tao. To flow along with the Great Tao, to follow the path in that same direction. So this would be the opposite of going against the Tao, getting poor results in life. To be greatly congruent with the Tao is to be with the Tao, one with the Tao. So then let's take a look at the chapter, see what it says. So as you can see, this chapter is nowhere near as long as Chapter 64. Here's Tao Te Ching, Chapter 65. Those of ancient times who were adept at the Tao used it not to make people brighter, but to keep them simple. The difficulty in governing people is due to their excessive cleverness. Therefore, using cleverness to govern the state is being a thief of the state. Not using cleverness to govern the state is being a blessing of the state. Know that these two are both standards. Always knowing these standards is called mystic virtue. Mystic virtue, profound. Far-reaching, it goes opposite to material things. Then it reaches great congruence. There it is again at the very end. Great congruence, which is the title of this chapter. So we're going to work our way there to see the hidden meaning, the deeper layers of meaning of that concept. Now, quick comments about this particular chapter. Is that this can be difficult to interpret or to understand because we typically, in modern times, think of being brighter, being clever as good things, and yet here, the sense of this chapter, the meaning of this chapter, is quite the opposite. Lao Tzu is saying that, well, to be, to make people brighter. To excessively use cleverness is going to be a bad thing, and using cleverness to govern the state. You know, now when we look at this, we would say that yeah, well, we want people who are smart to be in charge. So what's wrong with using cleverness to govern the state? This is where we need to dig deeper. Into actual Tao teachings and understand exactly where Lao Tzu is coming from. So I will be explaining today after we do the sectional analysis 
why Lao Tzu sees a difference between intelligence and wisdom. Intelligence is where we get the brightness, the mental brilliance, and the cleverness. And we typically see it as a positive attribute, but not in the Tao, not necessarily. For now, let's take a look at where the repeating characters are so we can do a sectional analysis, identify the different sections. First, I want to point out that you can see repeating characters in six and eight. You've got four characters in comma there in the same position. And the translation to the right side will tell you exactly what those are. Using cleverness to govern the state. And then same translation in line eight. The only difference is the line six starts out with therefore, which can also be translated as so, as o, or thus. Then line eight starts out with a character that's translated as not. Now, looking before line six, from one to five, we can see that there's actually not a whole lot of repeating characters. As I scan through them, I see that the second character of line two is the same as the second character of line three. The second character of line one is the same as the second character of line four. But that's pretty much it. So it doesn't look like the section before this cleverness line has a lot of repetition or poetic construction. That's okay. We can identify it as one section based on the meaning that this is talking about what ancient rulers did, the ancient rulers who were adept at the Tao. And then it talks about that people will be difficult to govern if they are excessively clever. Now, in the section we're looking at now, which we can identify as the second section, we can see additional repeating characters. So below six, line seven has a lot of, has two characters in common with line nine. Let's go ahead and highlight them. And the translation is also highlighted of the state. So the first character, Guo, that's the character translated as state. And then Zhi, that's actually the apostrophe S. And therefore, when translated as of, it has to be moved to the end to be grammatically correct. So we can identify this as the second section, as you can see. Then, looking at the third section, we see a bunch of repeating characters. Let me point out the most significant here. We've got in line 10 and line 11, they end on the same two characters translated as standards. And then line 12 ends with mystic virtue, which is a, a very important concept in the Tao. And those two characters are used as the beginning characters for line 13. And line 13 talks about mystery virtue being profound and far-reaching. That's a pretty good hint to us that we need to, we need to focus on it and figure out exactly what it means. Okay, so now let's turn our attention back to the first section so we can work our way through it line by line. So line one, those of ancient times who were adept at the Tao. Let me break the first, let me break up the first line, break it down into different characters and meaning. So we've got basically six characters here. The first character means ancient. Second character, same as what we have seen before, zhi, apostrophe yes, then, we have a character here for good, 
being good at something, being skillful at something. And then we have a preposition at. Then we have the character for the Tao, same as the character you see in the upper left, uh, upper right hand corner of every slide. And then the last character there is the character for those who. And so, of course, when we string this up together, when we combine it like this, it, uh, it doesn't sound like English at all. We have to rearrange the different components to make it sound a little better in English. Those who were skillful with the Tao in ancient times. And then in the translation here, you see another version of it. Those of ancient times who were adept at the Tao. And now I think you can see that the translation is conveying the same meaning as what you see here in the second bullet point of the slide. So why the difference? Well, they're expressing the same thing, but when I translated this, I moved ancient times up to near the beginning because the very first character is ancient. And I made sure that the Tao is toward the end because in the original, that's how it was. So yeah, they say the same thing, but what I'm trying to do in translating the line is to preserve the original as much as linguistic differences will allow. Okay, let's move on. I want to point out the first character, Gu, meaning ancient. This is what Lao Tzu wrote. When he wrote ancient Gu, he meant people who were ancient to him. Lao Tzu is ancient to us because he lived 2,500 years ago. The ancients to Lao Tzu are the people who were about that long from him. They were the true originators of Taoism. Lao Tzu himself never claimed to be the originator. When he came around 2,500 years ago, there's already been a tradition of the Tao that went back more than 2,000 years. So what Lao Tzu did was that he took the teachings from that tradition and he summarized it in 81 chapters, 81 verses, if you will, of the Tao Te Ching. That was his role. So more than 2,000 years before his time, that was actually when the Yi Jing was, uh, had originated the Tao uh, way before Lao Tzu. So the, the, the true origin of the Tao is at least a couple thousand years before the time of Lao Tzu, Lao Tzu and possibly quite a bit longer before that. Uh, that is to say, the origin of the Tao may be lost in prehistoric times. And you can think of the Tao Te Ching itself as you know, being a summary. It's like Cliff's Notes. It's uh, the world's first Cliff's Notes in history. Let's take a look at line two. So why, why uh, did the ancient masters of the Tao do what they, what they did? Um, how did they use the Tao in their task of ruling the people? So this is a reference to the fact that the very ancient masters of the Tao were often the philosopher kings of ancient times. That not only were they rulers, but also they were versed in the Tao in order to help them rule. And what Lao Tzu uh, pointed out here is that they used the Tao not to make people brighter, and this is uh, in modern times when people look at this naturally, at least to the question like, you know, well, why wouldn't they want to make people brighter? And that's due to the disconnect, the misunderstanding that we have with what Lao Tzu meant by having, be, having people be brighter. Therefore, this, uh, this line can be quite puzzling. This statement can be puzzling. And let's go ahead and dig right into it. The understanding of the ancient sage kings was that 
they would not use the Tao to teach people how to be cunning, how to be shrewd, and how to use clever tricks. So cleverness or brightness, mental brightness in this case, specifically refers to calculating shrewdness, a very aggressive, harsh kind of um, intelligence. And how do we know that this is what Lao Tzu actually meant? How do we know that he was criticizing intelligence as not the great thing everybody thought it was? Well, for one thing, the interpretation that I'm providing to you here is the consistent interpretation of the Tao Te Ching from all commentaries uh, back to uh, certainly to the time of Wang Bi. Wang Bi lived about six or seven centuries after the time of Lao Tzu, so pretty close to that time. And all other commentaries also agreed on this point. Lao Tzu wasn't talking about making people smart um, or not making people smart. He was talking about not making people likely to use their intelligence to try to make personal gains at the expense of others. It is also this interpretation that we're talking about now, it is also consistent with the message from the rest of this chapter. The other lines talk a lot more about how the misuse of intelligence can be very damaging. And in the final analysis, we just have to get back to the simplicity of the Tao to avoid the damaging effects of negative intelligence. Not only that, but also other chapters in the Tao Te Ching reiterate the same message in different ways. So in Tao Te Ching chapter 20, we see the following lines. This is a chapter where Lao Tzu wrote about the difference between himself and most people. So he says, ordinary people are bright. I alone am muddled. He was trying to make the point that when people are quote unquote bright, it wasn't a positive use of intelligence, but that people will be shrewd and calculating. And to be muddled is to be simple, that most people will look at him, look at Lao Tzu and say that, well, why aren't you taking care? Well, why, why aren't you taking advantage of the situation? Why aren't you utilizing your brilliant mind to, to, to get what's yours? To go after material gains. If you're not doing that, are you dumb? Are you simple-minded? So Lao Tzu admitted that he seemed muddled in the eyes of the most, but in reality, he was following the Tao. He was following the simplicity of the Tao. Same with the ancient masters, the ancient philosopher rulers. They were in tune with the Tao. They realized the harm that could result from people learning how to exploit a situation, take advantage of the system, look for loopholes, look for shortcuts. That's why. So understanding that makes the next line much more, much easier to understand. The next line says, but to keep them simple, it means the ancient rulers of the Tao who were adept at the Tao used the Tao to keep regular everyday people simple, not dumb, simple. And let's talk about the character here. Um, first of all, this line is the reverse of the previous line, so it can be misinterpreted just like the previous line can be misinterpreted. Then I want to single out the character Yu which is the third character that you see in the line, it means foolish in modern Chinese. So if you were to plug foolish or fool into the translation, you might mistakenly think that Lao Tzu is saying the ancient rulers of the Tao use the Tao to keep people dumb. That's actually not what it means. The ancient usage is different from modern Chinese. It does not mean what it looks like to modernize. You know, a modern person 
who speaks Mandarin, who can read or write. Fooling people, it, this does not mean that the ancient rulers used the Tao to fool people as in deceiving them. That's not what it means at all. It also does not mean making people fools as in making them less intelligent. It also doesn't mean that. What it does mean is guiding people toward simplicity. So simplicity, this is a this is an interesting word that I want to that I want to highlight a little bit. Simplicity, can you connect that to the meaning of foolish? Okay, there's linguistically, there's actually connection between the word simple and the word fool. Let me explain. Even in English, we have a word like simpleton to describe a fool. So right, right there, you see a connection between the word simple and the term fool. There's also the expression simple-minded, which can also be linked to being foolish. So similar semantic connection between simplicity and foolishness. It is the same linguistically in Chinese. And this is how, in general, people who do not understand the Tao can easily mistake simplicity with simple-mindedness. Now, the ancient sages, though, did not have that misconception. They realized that being too clever could be negative. We have seen this happen in life as well. In our own lives, there are times when we ourselves try to be too clever, or we see other people try to be too clever, and it totally backfires. We end up looking foolish. We achieve the opposite effect of what we were trying to accomplish. And this happens over and over again in pretty much uh, every aspect of life. So certainly, the ancient sages noted that, and they realized that the opposite approach to simplify laugh, life, to be direct, rather than to, be, to get too fancy and clever, that was actually the better way. Therefore, they used the Tao to teach people to be honest and direct, pointing out this is the better way, rather than to try to talk your way out of a situation using fancy excuses, elaborate rules, it would be better just to come clean. You're going to thank yourself later. So they taught people to be practical, to stick to the basics and the practical aspects of life. And so let me just repeat one more time. The simplicity of Tao can be mistaken for simple-mindedness. It is actually not. It is actually the result of observing generations of people who do bad things to themselves by being too clever and then realizing that it's actually much better. Honesty is the best policy. Being simple and direct oftentimes is a lot better than being complex and, you know, roundabout. So let's talk about the next line. This is now talking about the people that's governed by the ancient sage kings. The difficulty in governing people is what the line says. So I want to isolate the first character there, Min. What does that mean? That means people. So in ancient times, in a kingdom, it would mean subjects under the ruler. Today, it will mean citizens of a nation. Either way, it means people. So the line says the difficulty in governing people, let's take a look at that. It is, now we can see, uh, now that you hear about the uh, negativity associated with being too clever, you can see exactly what Lao Tzu is driving at. The difficulty refers to people being tricky and deceptive. So to be tricky and deceptive, that actually requires intelligence. Somebody has to be smart to be able to come up with tricks. 
and deception. But then, from the perspective of the kingdom or society, well, society must be built on a foundation of common trust. What that means is that if there's too much of people being tricky and deceptive, that foundation can break, can be breached. It's hard to enforce laws if people are always looking for loopholes. And it takes intelligence to be looking for loopholes in laws. So let's, let's talk about that. The excessive cleverness. The character is the third one, zhi. And it means intelligence, it means smart. And here, I think now you can see that this is actually denoting the negative kind of intelligence. Now, when I say the negative kind of intelligence, a lot of times people are a little bit surprised because we're so used to intelligence being seen as a good thing. What are you talking about? The negative side of intelligence, the negative kind of intelligence, what is that? Well, it's the kind of intelligence that one can use to benefit oneself at the expense of others. It is also the intelligence that this person will use to justify his or her actions, however damaging they may be. It's about being aggressive and demanding, particularly in pursuit of material goals like fame and fortune. It's the kind of intelligence that is exacting, harsh, unforgiving, scrutinizing, controlling, dominating, perfectionist. So I think I've made my point. I think you see the kind of negative intelligence that I'm talking about here. So let's take a look at the whole line. Due to their excessive cleverness, too much of this negative intelligence leads to chaos. Yep. Now that we explain it this way, it seems like, yeah, of course, Lao Tzu is making a lot of sense. Absolutely, he's pointing out something in life that maybe a lot of people don't think about when they see intelligence as a good thing, but in fact, it can be a bad thing. People would often use it to benefit themselves at others' expense. And it comes down to the idea that intelligence is a tool, a tool that can be used for good or not so good. So a little bit more about that later on. And looking at the whole line, I want to take you through what, what Lao Tzu observes in the world. First, Lao Tzu observes that a civilized society is governed by laws, must be governed by laws. People use cleverness to get around them. Then the government has to enforce more laws, create more laws in the books to counter the loopholes, to plug the loopholes in the laws. Now, this doesn't solve the situation because it creates complexity. Within greater complexity, people can more easily hide or twist the laws for their own purposes to be manipulative. And this goes on and on. That is, when, when the government sees that people are hiding, twisting, manipulating, it will enact even more laws to counteract. And that leads to even more complexity. And with greater complexity, it leads to even more hiding, twisting, and manipulating. Frankly, isn't that what we see in our world today? Look at the complex laws that we have. Look at the people who make a living advising others on how to get around complexity of our laws. Look at the ever increasing complexities in every aspect of the legal system. When you see all that, you are forced, I think, to agree with Lao Tzu. And that is, ultimately, the only solution 
is the simplicity of the Tao. Yeah, we are already seeing this in our own society. What Lao Tzu says in ancient times is just as true today. So now, let me show you this slide. How do we apply this to life? Remember, no matter what we talk about in the Tao, ultimately, it's all talking about your life, my life, our lives. So in this particular slide, I want to talk about the kingdom in the left-hand column there. And then how we uh, how we go from there to the right hand side, with, which is your life. So the kingdom is what um, what Lao Tzu is talking about in this particular chapter of the Tao Te Ching. And this is divided into two parts: intelligence, wisdom. Now, if if I didn't explain the previous slides and the previous lines, you would probably assume that intelligence and wisdom are both good things. What I'm trying to say here, though, is that intelligence is not the same as wisdom. Wisdom is being in accordance with the Tao, so it's always a good thing. Wisdom is what adds to life. Wisdom is what brings joy into life. Hopefully that's making sense for everybody. Intelligence, as I mentioned just a moment ago, is more like a tool that can be used for good or ill. Let's take a common tool as an example. Let's just say a hammer. A hammer is a tool. And yes, we all know that we can use a hammer to do useful work. You know, maybe home improvement tasks around the house, maybe construction tasks. On the other hand, I think it's also obvious to everyone that one can use a hammer to hurt and seriously injure other people. It's a tool. It doesn't care how it's used. The wielder of the hammer determines how that is used. Intelligence is just like that. So let's take a look. Lao Tzu says, for the kingdom, ancient society, intelligence is what excessive cleverness was pointing to and we talked about how that was all about you know being uh, shrewd being calculating how does that map to your life it is also possible for us to be overly shrewd and calculating in life and it can mean that you overthink what you should do, how you should feel, how you should justify yourself with your great intelligence instead, instead of just following the simple Tao. And excessive people are also the ones that are constantly looking for shortcuts. That's the next, next row here. For the kingdom, for the ancient kingdom, seeking loopholes to exploit in the laws of the land using cleverness against other people. So that's what excessive cleverness can potentially do. How that maps to life, looking for shortcuts. Shortcuts that don't necessarily go anywhere. It can lead to that shrewdness, that calculation can lead to analysis paralysis. Thinking too much about something, never actually taking action. It can lead to too much complexity in life making things too complicated for yourself. So for the ancient society, for the kingdom, that is the environment of which Lao Tzu spoke, it makes the people difficult to govern when they are trying to be so clever in getting around the laws. In your life, in the kingdom that you rule right now, today, overly shrewd and calculating, it leads to difficulties in life, being too clever, achieving the opposite effect of what you're looking for, sabotaging yourself as a result. That's what Lao Tzu was talking about. What about wisdom? Well, Lao Tzu is making the point that the wise rulers of ancient times guided people towards simplicity, that honesty and directness were the better way to go. Same thing for us. 
rather than too much cleverness. It's better if we lift the Tao of simplicity, honesty, and directness. It's the best policy. Gets the be it's the best results. A lot of times, cleverness is focusing on short-term gains, but then long-term loss. The simplicity of the Tao is about long-term benefits, lasting benefits for yourself. Wisdom is also about adhering to the basics of governing. And what that means is providing for the people the basics that people expect or looking for, infrastructure, you know, good roads and bridges, and environments that is peaceful, law abiding, so trade can flourish. For when we map that to the personal level, it's about adhering to the basics of cultivation. And that means working our way through the Tao Te Ching, one line after another, just like we're doing now, thinking about the Tao, applying the Tao to life, all of the above. So the positive results that lead, this leads to, that Lao Tzu talks about, is that the kingdom is easy to govern and becomes powerful. For us, when we use wisdom instead of intelligence, we get similar results, life is easy, you become spiritually powerful. So I think you begin to glimpse the point that Lao Tzu is trying to make. As we go further into the chapter, you're gonna find that this correct interpretation is reinforced line after line throughout the entire chapter. Today, we were able to complete our discussion of 64, and that ties in neatly to chapter 65, ruling your own life, like the wise sage kings in ancient times. So this is going to get into topics that we will cover next time, but we have a pretty good preview of it. We want to watch for the negative type of intelligence because they can lead to failure. And remember, it's about the calculating shrewdness. It's about adding to complexity, adding to the clutter in your life. In the chart that you saw, we also talked about wisdom. The wisdom of the Tao is the best way. So we want to stay on the road without veering into side paths. Side paths is what intelligence will tempt you with. It's something that appears to be a shortcut, but actually turns out to be just a waste of time. The Tao itself is easy to walk. It's easy to make progress on it. We just have to be consistent. We just have to walk the path together. And the Tao is what brings powerful, beneficial blessings into your life. Our meeting has come to an end, but the journey continues on. Let us all travel safely so we can meet again. Until next time. May the Dell fill you with peace and happiness.